Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I was in the military. I think I've mentioned that a time or two. <laughs> More specifically, I went to war uh, several times. Uh, the first time with the Marines at the very beginning of the Iraq war, the first night we went you know, across the border. Uh, the second time was a few years later, and this time I was with MNCI, uh, multinational core Iraq uh, V core uh, it was basically you know how you watch the Tom Clancy movies and they always have that command center with a whole bunch of monitors it was that I was basically working in that type of a situation and then uh, the third time I was in Afghanistan you know as an infantryman doing patrols um, so uh, I hear this phrase culture war and uh, I would definitely say I look at it with a jaundiced eye so I'll do a video about the difference between an actual war and a culture war. So in an actual war, and especially because I have an experience of being in one war literally at the beginning and being in another war when it, geez, I got there in 2008, so it had been going for seven years. It had been going on for a while. Uh, so when you start a war, you have let's just say very broad objectives. <laughs> um, you're like, we want to uh, take the command structure out, replace it with a completely new one, um, uh, hunt down every villain in the entire country, and by the end of the war, you're just talking to the tribal leaders and you're saying, can we get uh, decapitations reduced by 30% over the next five years? The longer a war goes on, the smaller and more realistic the goals are. Another phrase that gets used all the time is, uh, well, bend to the knee, of course, bend the knee. The funny thing is that when you're on a patrol, um, when you get to take a knee, you're so, so happy. And you have so much weight on your back and you've been hiking for hours and you gotta hike for more hours. So whenever you get a hand and arm signal that says, hey, you know, you can take a knee, you're so happy. You're so happy. Now, going into the prone where you're lying flat on the ground, people usually aren't crazy about, I mean, that has advantages. If you're gonna be stopping for a long time, that's better. But then sometimes you'll have to go to the prone and you have to get right back up, you know, like a minute later, you're like, couldn't we have just taken a knee? <laughs> so the other one is hill to die on. And uh, this phrase gets used very, very strangely. Um, and then people will try to be like, well, you were, you know, you were in combat. Don't you know what it's like? And I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> there, fella, why don't you calm down there, buddy? Uh, so the thing about a hill is you fight for a hill at a very specific time because it has value. In the Korean War chosen reservoir campaign, uh, a Marine company would fight for one hill and lose 50 men in a night. And in the morning, they would pack up and leave because that hill no longer had value. And you'd say, oh, you're leaving. Those men died for nothing. No, they died for the strategic value that, you know, uh, that uh, hill had the night before. But then, you know, the enemy forces, they move to a different location. You know, your uh, coalition, they move. Um, and all of a sudden, that hill is just a hill. It's meaningless and to die over it is meaningless. Whereas the night before, it actually meant something. So uh, those are, you know, the phrases that kind of use, you know, culture war and showing what a real war is like. Culture war, from what I've seen, is just like endless strife. It, like I said, it's like, it's like one marine company and, you know, enemy company just decided to continually fight over the same hill since 1950. It has no strategic value. There's like a little, you know, there's a farm down there and the guy's just like, yeah, they've just been fighting over that hill for freaking 71 years. It doesn't really make sense. From what I heard, this uh, was only really important for about a week. Uh, you know, the uh, Chinese forces had it and then the uh, Marines took it from them and then the Marines left, the Chinese took it, but then they're like, nobody's here. Why are we here? They left and then we just, you know, my family just farmed here for 71 years. That's the story. So what I see with uh, a culture war is just constant strife, attrition, um, uh, no peace, no negotiating, no realizing like, hey, that really bothered me four years ago, but four years have passed and it doesn't bother me as much. It's not, no, 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 it, it, it has to bother you as much forever, forever. And that's just ridiculous. I don't really see culture wars as being anything related to a real war. Um, more specifically, um, when George Bush was president, we had a national security strategy. And it was 
very broad. It was like, take down Al-Qaeda, take down the Taliban in all their networks in all countries. And then Obama became president and his national security strategy was like, let's just find Osama bin Laden. And lo and behold, after looking for him for a decade, they found him. Now, yeah, it's not as simple as that, but I've always taken that lesson that when you uh, focus on less goals, you're more likely uh, to achieve them. Um, I'm not really seeing anything winnable in the culture war. It's just a constant attrition. And then by the time anyone would actually ever like win or control it, you know, it's just, just this scarred battlefield with salted soil. It's completely useless. Like, why would you even want it? You fight for things that have strategic value and that will shift so quickly. And if you stay there, you're just wasting your time. You have a life. Don't waste your life. Don't waste years of your life on stupid ass shit. So anyway, tell me what you think about this video and I theoretically may review a comic in the future. Bye.